Hi guys, I am finally doing it. I keep uh, stalling doing this type of video just because I haven't done it before, but you know what? We're just gonna, we're gonna go for it. So here you go, my first YouTube video. I wanted a way to introduce myself and share my story and catch people up. And the longer I do this, the more I realize that I can't keep you know, reintroducing myself on the Instagram page. So I'm excited to share with you my weight loss journey, carnivore, you know, my husband and I, some steak tips. Those are the kind of things that we're gonna do videos about. So this video is really just to say hi, to talk about the process of how I lost 120 pounds in less than a year on carnivore. And then we'll start making some videos, give you some tips and show you about our daily life. I wanna give a little bit of backstory. If you have seen me in other YouTube videos before or heard some podcasts, we did Carnivore Cast. I will link some places down below. You can hear a longer list of things, of interviews that we've done, but I wanted to be able to give you a brief synopsis and catch you up at this point. So a little backstory, I, I've always been heavier. I have, you know, gr went to college and put on 30 pounds my freshman year, right? When I was growing up, my mom baked homemade bread every day. I grew up kind of in a really rural town. We grew our own vegetable garden. We had, you know, meat that people had donated to us or like local farmers and um, that had, had given us. And so really whole foods diet, a lot of potatoes fresh baked desserts that we used to make all the time. And it, there wasn't really any junk food. I remember there was, it was a really big deal that once a year on our birthday, we got to pick out a box of sugar cereal. And that was the one time a year we really got any kind of junk food was on our birthday. It's a fancy treat. So when I went to college and realized I could buy whatever I wanted, I started eating sugar cereal every day. And you know, I had fast food, really accessible to the for the first time um, and I put on 30 pounds my freshman year of college and really there began my life of yo-yo dieting um, I went on a low-carb diet and or kind of a restrictive diet at the time and lost some weight and then spent the next really five years going up and down that same 30 40 pounds I probably hit 200 pounds for the first time right around my freshman year of college and spent the next several years, you know, losing 20, gaining 30, lose 30, gain 40, and up and down. Uh, about five years ago, I actually tried a vegan diet for a year. I decided that had to be the best way for me to lose weight. I watched the movie Forks Over Knives, and like so many other people, I believed the vegan movement and that it was a way to health. And so I tried a vegan diet for a while. I was eating vegetables and tons of sprouted oats and quinoa, every kind of vegetable, spinach smoothies and chia seeds and hemp hearts and all that kind of stuff. And really was, by the end of that year, was extremely unhealthy. I lost 50 pounds. At that point though, cutting out fast food really would have resulted in weight loss. But I also had a lot of issues with, with acne, with energy, endurance. My hair started falling out everywhere. And really by the end of that, I was dealing with some severe malnutrition. Um, my teeth were having a lot of issues as well. And I was kind of starting to rapidly develop a large amount of cavities and gum disease, all kinds of really fun stuff that unfortunately most people who are on a vegan diet get over time. At that point, I just started reintroducing meat and foods again. I think for Christmas we had a giant steak and I, was like, oops, not vegan anymore, and really never went back after that. But the problem is I also introduced some junk food and fast food at that point and really just went back to my old ways. I have always been somebody who's good with restriction, but never good with moderation, which is a whole topic for a whole other video. But I have no sense of moderation whatsoever. Which is why then, you know, I met my husband, we um, got pregnant, right after, well, had a baby right after we got married. And right around that time, you know, he found out he was type two diabetic. And so he went on a low carb diet. I had my daughter and went on a low carb diet pretty quickly right after that and lost weight. I lost, I think 60 pounds. I had, you know, around that point, I was around 230 pounds. And so I got down to around 160 and was feeling great. 
but it was that low carb diet and we kind of took a break at that point celebrated hitting my weight loss goal and went out for cheesesteaks and had a big pint of ice cream that night and really never looked back um gained another 40 pounds back got pregnant with my son and really just decided i was gonna you know be pregnant and eat whatever and got up to 250 pounds at that point after i had my son i just really never got into the groove of trying to lose weight again um and it took me a couple years of that same i would be on a diet for a couple weeks and then be off for a couple months and back and forth and really could never stick to anything i was in this constant state of I would start a diet on Monday and by Wednesday I had already messed up. So that must mean the whole week is shot and I'll just eat as much as I can. I really get it out of my system this time. I'll just eat I'll just all the foods that I've been craving. I'll just eat them all this next five days and then I'll start again Monday. And then I would do that. So basically binge for five days, eat whatever I wanted. Monday would come around, all right, I'm back on the diet again. Well then by like Wednesday or Thursday, I was off again. I have one bad thing and decide, you know what? It's just because I really wasn't ready. I didn't have all, I didn't have Oreos. I didn't have the things that I wanted to have. So I would go off the rails again for several days and wait again until Monday. And it just was this constant cycle of all of that on again, off again. Finally, my son was going to be two. And this was in March of actually, I think January, right? January 1st, I always started the diet and really tried to start another low carb diet. I was good for most of January and then same thing went off again. It was my daughter's birthday at the end of January and I remember having cake and then deciding, well, there goes that, I'll just eat bad back on it again. Finally, around March of 2018, I hit my highest weight of 263 pounds. I went to the doctor and they weighed me. Uh, I weighed more than than I did when I went into labor with my son and he was almost two. So that was a pretty profound wake up call for me, to be honest. So I started another diet again, just like all the other ones. And I was ready. I mean, this time I was really physically, mentally, it felt like the same starting a diet as anything, but I was, you know, every time I failed, I would just get a little more determined to stick with it. And I knew in January I had been strict for the whole month and had lost like 25 pounds but I had gained it all back between the end of January and March. I'm really good at losing quickly and then turning around and gaining it all quickly. So March came, keto was a big deal. March of 2018, I started keto, tracking, macros, did the whole thing, learned out about intermittent fasting through that. So by the time we hit to April, I was down to two meals a day, snacking, still tracking a little bit. Uh, let me get my timeline here, make sure I, tell you everything. So I got the down to, you know, lost 20 pounds that first month doing keto and was still tracking everything. But at that point I was eating a lot of fat. I was still thinking that you had to eat as much fat as the keto macros tell you to. And you know what, in the beginning when I weighed 263 pounds, I was able to do that. I could eat that much fat and still lose weight. But then at some point, you know, I would stall and that's really where the fasting had come into play. Uh, I had to reduce my fat content, to be honest. Like, I couldn't eat the fat that I was. And the other thing is, during that keto, I was so worried about my keto macros and hitting my fat macros that my protein was very low and my hair started falling out. So I was doing all this fasting, but I was really protein deprived. And that was even as of March of last year. So once I moved into April, I was doing two meals a day. We had learned about fasting from Jason Fung. Uh, and read a lot of that stuff. My husband was doing this along with me. By the time we got to May, I really had pumped up the fasting. I was doing one meal a day by that point. Whole foods, I had cut out all of the keto processed foods. I cut out the Quest bars, I cut out the, um, I never did the Bulletproof coffee and stuff, but I had learned enough to know that that wasn't gonna be helpful to me on my goals. And by May of 2018, I was eating veggies, meat, and a lot of macadamia nuts because they're extremely addicting. Uh, and I had lost like 20, 25, 30 pounds a, a month. Like really by that point I was down, you know, 50 pounds by the time we hit like July. And by that point, after I lost that first 50 pounds, I had been strict the whole time. 
then I started really stalling out and I started having uh, a lot of digestive issues. That's when we started researching carnivore. We heard the Joe, Sean Baker on Joe Rogan. Um, and I, I've joked about this before, but definitely I thought Chris was crazy for thinking that she didn't need vegetables and figured that, you know, I would give it a try for a week. And at the end of the week, I had a big salad and completely wrecked my system and my stomach. And by that point I knew that at least for now, I wasn't gonna need veggies. And I had no concept yet that this was gonna be the way I was gonna eat forever, but it was worth to me giving it a shot. And so by that point, um, I also learned about Cole Robinson, who is, does the snake diet. And I will warn you if you're gonna look up Cole, like he's definitely not family friendly content. Um, he was definitely the harsh dose of reality though that I needed at that time to have somebody to just to tell me that you could stop eating and you're not gonna die and you can fast. And so I really started incorporating longer fast at that point, 48 hours, 72 hours. I did a, you know, was strict carnivore by that point. And really, if I ever deviated from carnivore, it was to have some macadamia nuts. And that was a, a my occasional treat at that point. By the time we got to September, I had been that strict carnivore, doing those 40 hour fasts, having some macadamia nuts along the way. So I decided, you know what? I gotta step out my game. We'll cut those out completely. And I went down to meat and eggs and bacon and cheese. I was still having some sour cream and things like that. Um, and by October I hit 100 pounds weight loss. So from, started in May with keto and transitioned to the summer to carnivore. And by October I had hit, lost 100 pounds which was fantastic. And I think for the first time I had gotten to a point where I had planned to have like my 100 pound cheat day. And I hit that day and just decided, you know what, I'm feeling so good. Why would I want to ruin this momentum with a cheat day to celebrate, you know, losing weight? That's what I'd always done before. And so, I, I mean, results are so addicting that I just kept going and decided as long as I'm still going, I'm still gonna keep keep going and keep it up. So that's where I, Every time I kind of hit a stall, I would adjust something and change and push a little harder and push a little further just to try to keep those results going. Um, once I hit December, I had been stalled for a, a pretty significant amount of time. I lost that 100 pounds to October. By the time we hit December, I really had only lost another maybe five pounds in those three months. And I really was doing the same thing, one meal a day, meat, cheese, eggs, bacon, pork rinds, all that good stuff. So at that point, I realized that I had probably just been overeating this whole time. I upped the fasting once we hit December, and that's when I really cut out dairy. To me, it wasn't, cheese definitely does cause some inflammation for me, but if anything, having cheese makes me want bacon, makes me want pork rinds, makes me want this, and they're not physically satisfying. String cheese, to me, I could eat an unlimited amount of string cheese, and the same thing with bacon and pork rinds. It never is going to give me that full feeling and it's something that I easily can just eat and eat and eat. And so cutting those out not only helped me to reduce some bloating and digestive issues that I was still having and drop some weight that way, but also cut out all those calories. I know carnivore is not about tracking calories and necessarily restricting your calories. I was eating a really decent amount of beef. By that point I was eating one and a half pounds of beef a day, but I was also adding an additional thousand calories from bacon and cheese every day that was holding me back. And so for January, Sean Baker declared it World Carnivore Month and I decided I'd already been carnivore for a while, I'm gonna step it up and do beef only for 30 days. And that made such a difference. I instantly started losing weight again. I lost, which is at that point of how much I had lost, I dropped almost 20 pounds just in January. And I think part of that was inflammation and bloating that I was hanging on to from still keeping cheese in my diet and dairy in my diet. And then there was also this large amount of fat loss because I upped my beef intake at that point. I was eating closer to two pounds of beef around that time. And yet I cut out all those additional excess calories that I was just consuming mindlessly. So it helped me with fasting as well as really propelled my weight loss. So at the end of January, 2019, it's been about 10 months on this diet or on this clean way of eating and I had lost 120 pounds. 
since January, right, this is July, I am the same weight. I fluctuated a little bit here and there, but I have not gone below 140 pounds in the last six months. With that being said, I still have had progress. I can see, and I've taken pictures and I've shared those on my Instagram, I can see a major difference in my body composition. Since January, I definitely have lost body fat percentage since then. And I've used the little tracker at the gym, but I think we all know that's not a really accurate way of measuring that. So according to that machine, right, I'm down 4% body fat since January, but I'm not really putting too much stock in that. Uh, I will say though, in the last six months, I feel really good. Uh, I did have, and I'll talk about this on another post, but I did have, in the last six months, I've had one like cheat day that not only set me back physically by a month, but it really set me back mentally. And it's, it's one of the main reasons why I just know that I can't have small cheats. And I will do a whole discussion on this at some point, but I am not somebody who can just eat good 90% of the time. It is, to me, there is so much freedom in eating beef only or eating strict carnivore and to try to incorporate any kind of moderation to on a birthday have two bites of cake. Like there's no such thing to me as two bites of cake. It doesn't exist. I don't have a cookie. I can't have an Oreo. I need an entire sleeve of Oreos. That's just not how I operate. So currently I'm, you know, maintaining and, and figuring out what long term this looks like for me. I have been happiest over the last year with one meal a day. I feel like that allows me to eat as much as my oh, previously obese body wants to eat and I feel super full and then I am somebody who needs that mental restriction of you are not eating again for the next 24 hours. And yet when it comes time to eating again, you are going to be able to eat and feel physically full. I have incorporated lots of other fasting. We'll have a whole discussion on fasting so you guys can ask all those great questions that you have. Um, 48 hour fasts are something that I have done almost weekly for the last year. When I was looking to lose more, I was doing them twice a week, even a 72 hour fast at one point. I have done longer fasts. We'll have a discussion about extended fasting. I did a seven day fast recently with a group of people and I found a lot of healing through that. I definitely dropped some water weight that I was carrying, however, I've had a hard time coming back to food since then, mentally. Uh, I've found myself overeating on carnivore food since I came back from that fast. So I don't know if it's related or if it's the types of foods. That was one of those moments where I started thinking I could have pork rinds and then I have cheese and pepperonis. And then the next thing you know, I'm like sniffing jars of peanut butter in my pantry. And while that sounds dramatic, that is the reality that I have. Um, Sometimes it's very overwhelming to think that I just can't have a normal relationship with food, but uh, I think that the best thing about carnivore is the fact for me that I have been able to almost break free from that. I, I'm never going to be somebody who can just have a slice of pizza on a Friday night and go back to eating good on Saturday. But since I am able to, it, this is the first time I've ever been able to stick with something. The fact that I have maintained a weight loss for the last six months is shocking. I've shocked myself in that regard. And my goal is to, con to, if I weigh the same thing in January of 2020 as I did in January of 2019, it, I mean, we're going to have a big celebration, something that, you know, isn't food related. I'm going to buy myself something very pretty because uh, I want, you know, this would be the, the longest that I've really ever been able to maintain any kind of weight loss. And I think that the relationship that I have with food is something that I will continue to struggle with. But the fact that I have been able to be consistent does show to me how satiating carnivore is. The fact that I can eat steaks every day. I've learned more about ribeyes and sirloins and New York strips and all different kinds of cuts and how to cook meat uh, that I cannot wait to share with you. I am surprised still that people are, are along this journey with me. It is helps me tremendously to be able to share this with you. It helps to keep me accountable and it is really a blessing to hear your feedback and that hopefully my journey has helped you in some way. So with that being said, this is the first video 
that was probably a recap for a lot of you, but I hope that we can continue to share this journey together. And I love hearing that you're being challenged, hopefully, and that it's helping to keep you motivated as well, because it certainly does all of that for me. And I cannot wait to share some cooking tips with you, some struggles that I'm having, some wins. Let's share some wins together and see. So if you are interested in seeing more videos from me, please feel free to comment below and let me know uh, what types of videos you would love to see and feel free to subscribe to this new baby channel and we will go on this journey together. We'll figure it out because I think that is, especially with women eating steak, we gotta support each other. It is a whole far cry from the expectations of women eating salad all the time. And so the bigger, stronger community that we can have together, the more empowering it is and the more we can, you know, fe not feel awkward for when I order three steaks in a restaurant, uh, when the rest of my coworkers are eating salads for lunch. So thank you for your support and let me know what types of videos you want to see. Thanks guys.